Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. So today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this beaded bauble for your Christmas tree. So this is what it looks like, bottom and top. And then it's got these strands all the way around. So to make one of these, you're going to need some size 11 seed beads and you can either do all the same colour or a different colour for each stripe or you could do a mix like I've done. So I'm just going to be using a mix that I made just by putting together the beads that matched all the colours that are on my Christmas tree. And then you'll also need your thread and I'm going to use um, Nymo. This is size D for this because you need to use an awful lot of thread. So I don't want to use Fireline or something that's going to like cost so much money to use the whole reel of thread. So I'm going to use, it doesn't really matter what thread you use for this, so just a cheap beading thread that you've got, because you will need a lot, a lot, a lot of thread. And then when I use a thread like that, I always use a thread conditioner to make it easier to work with. So this is just a beeswax one. And you need your bauble. So the one that I'm using is a two inch or five centimeter bauble. Um, if you can't find one the same size, I tried to pick one that was kind of like the standard size that you see everywhere in big packs and things like that. But if you don't have one this size or you want to do a smaller one or a bigger one, I'll tell you as we go along, this is really easy to adapt to a different size bauble. So whatever size you've got, really, you'll be able to do this. Um, and I think that's everything. And as for the length of the thread, like I said, you're going to need a lot. So I can't really tell you how much because I added countless pieces of new thread as I went along. So and if you don't know how to do that, I do have a video for how to add thread. So you might want to watch that one before you get started. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Let's get started. So I forgot to say you'll also need a beading needle. So I'm using a size 12 beading needle for this. And then the first thing you're going to do is pick up two of your size 11 beads and slide those down. Just leave enough of a tail that you'll be able to tie a knot at the end, just five or six inches, and then go up through the first bead. So you have this, and now you're going to go back down through that second bead. So you have this, now picking up another bead. Coming out the bottom of this one, so you're going to go round and go through the top of that same bead that you're coming out of. like that and now up through that one you just added. So we've got three at the moment, picking up another one, going back into the bead that you've just, that you're coming out of, sorry, but on the opposite side. So I'm coming out the top, I'm gonna to go up through the bottom. And then down through the one you just added. One more time, so picking up one, going back into the one that you're coming out of on the opposite side to where your thread's coming out, and back through the one you just added. Okay, so right now you've got this, so we've got five beads on there. You're going to keep going until you've got 19, one nine, 19 beads added in this ladder stitch. So I'll join you back when you've done that. So then you should have this and it's all a bit wobbly at the minute. So what we're going to do is zigzag all the way back to the other end and that's going to straighten it out. So what I mean by that is if you're coming out the bottom of this one, you're going to go up through the next one. Or if you're coming out the top, you're going to go down through the next one. You get it. Pull it tight and those beads already have straightened together. So then down through the next one, pulling it tight every time, up through the next one down through the next one and so on until you get to the other end and you can already see the difference in how it makes those beads lie straight. So go ahead and get all the way back to the other side. Oh, so I totally forgot, I'm sorry, I said I'd tell you as we went along, if you're doing a different sized bauble, um, you'll need to adjust how many beads are in this row. But if you've already gone all the way to the other end, it doesn't matter, you can still, once you get to this end, you can still add like two or three more beads um, if you need extra. If you need less, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to undo that bit and then take off however many 
I forgot to say as we went, as we started this bit, that as you're going along, if your bauble's a different size, when you're making your ladder stitch, oops, you just have to keep holding it around the top of your bauble. So, you know that gold bit that holds the bauble together, just keep holding it around until it's going to meet, just meet, because when you go back up and zigzag through them to make them go straight, it's going to come a little bit smaller. So, they just about meet, then that's perfect. So whatever size bauble you're doing, that's what you have to measure it around. So, sorry I forgot to say that, but now we can carry on uh, going to the end of the row. Okay, so we've got this, your 19 beads or however many you've got in your sequence. And now we're going to add the strands. So this is like doing a fringe earring. Um, and there's going to be 45 beads in the strand. So if your bauble is a lot bigger or a lot smaller, when you've created the first strand, let me just show you on this one that I've got ready here already. Um, when you've created the first strand, just hold it at the top like that and hold your strand round and down the bauble and you want it to sit, you know, right at the bottom of the bauble. Sorry, it's really hard to show you. You want it to sit like towards the bottom of the bauble so you're not going to see this ring that joins them all together. So you just kind of measure that. I just kind of guesstimated at 45 just so that when you look at it straight on, it ends just going around the curve of the underside. Okay, so that's how you're going to measure. If yours is a lot smaller, you'll need a lot less, obviously, and then you'll need a lot more if it's a bigger bauble. But for this one that I'm showing you with the two... Uh, two inch bauble you need strands of 45 beads so this is what takes the time <laughs> picking up 19 lots of 45 so go ahead and pick up 45 beads onto your thread and my best advice I can give you if you're working with a mix like I am is to literally just count them just pick them up randomly I know that sounds obvious but when I used to work with a mix um, I used to be really conscious of which colour I was picking up and I was thinking like, oh no, I've picked up two reds in a row or three greens in a row. Haven't picked up a gold one in a while and it takes ages if you do it like that. <laughs> so don't even think about what you're picking up because that's the best way to get the true mix. Because when you see the mix in the bag, of course, there's going to be like red ones together and green ones together. If you try and plan it too much, it will stop looking like a random mix. So that was just a piece of advice I wanted to share. Um, so go ahead and pick up your 45 beads. Okay, so I've picked up my 45 beads and I've slid them all the way down till they meet up here. And then just like you would with a fringe earring, if you've ever done one before, you're gonna ignore that last bead, the 45th bead, slide that out of the way. You're not gonna go through that and then you're gonna go back up through all the other 44 beads and up into this one that they're coming out of at the top. Okay, so let's see how many passes I need to go through. So I hold it on my finger like this and then I've got that one bead hanging down there. So going back through the other 44. Can't do it all at once. It can be a little bit fiddly. Probably if you make a lot of fringe earrings, you'll be a lot better at this than I am. Nearly there. Okay, so I'm going through all of those and then I'm going back through that one on the top row that I was coming out of. Hold your strand out the way when you pull it through so it doesn't get tangled. Okay, and it hasn't happened to me, but let me just pull it out to show you in case it does. If you, after you pull it through, you've got like loops in here. Let's see if I can show you. It usually happens every time and then the one time I want to show you it doesn't. So if you get like loops and things as you pull it through or you get gaps, hold on to that last bead between your thumb and your finger. Hold that tight as you pull it and it until it meets like that. Okay, so that's our first strand. And now we're coming out the top of that red bead at the top. You're going to go down through the next one in your row 
your base row. And you're going to do the same thing again. So picking up 45 beads each time, just go back and watch that strand again if you need a reminder of how to do it. And then you're going to add 19 strands of 45 beads. So enjoy and I'll see you at the other end. Okay, so once you've done all of them, it's going to look like this really cool fringe skirt that we've got here. Um, I just love this mix. <laughs> So now we're going to join it together and put it onto the bauble. So first things first, you should have one end with your tail thread and your other end over here where your working thread is. You're going to fold it in half so that they meet like that. So my working thread's coming out of this red bead and that's my tail thread there. So I'm coming out the top of the red bead and go down through the gold one that you're working thread is coming, your tail thread's coming out of the other end. Be careful that your strands don't get caught in this, it's so fiddly. Okay, like that. Turn it around so you can see. So they're joined together at the top, we need to join them at the bottom. So I'm coming out the bottom of the gold one, I'm going to go up through the bottom of the red one, and I'm going to go through that a couple more times, make sure it's not going to keep coming undone. Okay, until I'm coming out the bottom of the gold one again. Doesn't matter which one. So now we have this and you can place it on your bauble. So this can be a bit fiddly. I'm just going to take my hook off. Trying to get your bauble in there and not get your strands all tangled, but just <laughs> shimmy your bauble into the middle and then Try and get your strands back where they should be, shake them about so none of them are sitting over each other like mine are here. Make sure they're all flat and they're all in the right place, like that. And now you need to travel down to the bottom of whichever strand you know you're coming out at. So I'm here near this strand here i'm coming out there so i'm going to travel down to the bottom of that strand okay so i've gone down all the way to the very bottom bead of that strand and this is going to be hard to show <laughs> i didn't really think about this so i'm just going to try and hold them a bit like that so you can kind of see what i'm doing so i'm at the bottom you need to make sure as you do this that your strands aren't overlapping so you're not going through the wrong one and making it all twisted so just make sure they're all flat and in the right place, like that. So I'm coming out the bottom of this one. And depending on which side of that bead you're coming out of, so I'm coming out this side going that way. So I'm going to be moving that way around. You're going to pick up one bead and go through that bottom bead on the next strand. Oops. Like that, sorry about the angle, I'm trying to show you as best as I can without it falling back off the bauble all the time. So you've got those two strands joined together, then picking up one and find your next strand, make sure it is your next one and go through the bottom bead on your next strand. Easier said than done, like that. So now they're joined together and you guessed it, you're going to go all the way around. And if by the end, mine was on this one, almost perfect, except I had like one less bead than what I needed. There was a bit of a gap. So when I got to the end, if it looks as if your circle's not going to join and you're going to have a gap of thread, you can always add two beads on the last join, if you know what I mean, or one less if it looks like your circle's too loose. So, and depending on the size of your bauble, you'll have to adjust that as well. Once you get towards the end of your circle, you'll be able to see. Um, if it's a really big bauble, it may be the case that you have to go back and put two beads in between each strand. Um, it's just kind of going along and seeing how it goes as you go. So, keep going all the way around and I'll see you at the other end. Okay, so I'm almost there and I've got this and if it's all a bit like this don't be alarmed so i'm coming out here and i haven't joined it back to that first strand so i'm just going to pick up my final bead and see if it's going to be the right amount this time or if i'm going to need to add an extra one let's see i think i will because i did on the other one so i'm going to pick up two 
here and then I'm going to go back through the first uh, the final bead in that first strand which was that red one for me okay then I can finally let go of it up this end pull it really tight to bring your circle together kind of spread your strands out make sure that that's a good spacing okay so that's good for me so now I've got this if you let go it's gonna do that so what I tend to do is with however much thread I've got left and however many times the beads will let me I'm gonna go through that loads of times through the whole circle at the bottom so you want to go ahead and do that and that's just going to make it really secure before you tie your knots because if it's not really secure and you go and tie your knots there's a chance as it the knot tightens you'll let go of the tension and it'll end up tied like that so yep pull it really tight go through it loads of times and then i'll show you how to tie your knots so once you're satisfied it's quite nice and tight here you can let it go and it's not going to unravel just want to tie our knots so starting with the working thread I just tie it here at the bottom so my thread's coming out here so what I'm going to do is take my needle under those beads into the middle of the circle pull it down and I'm going to go through that loop that I've created go through it twice pull it down make sure it's nice and tight and then I'm going to move around and tie a few more knots in that same way and then before you cut it, I usually travel up part of the way up one of these strands and cut it so that it's, you know, don't cut it right next to your knot or it might unravel over time. So go ahead and do that. And then you want to do the same thing with your tail thread. But because that tail thread is at the top, I just tend to either tie a knot up here or move down to the bottom and do the same thing and then cut both your threads off and you are all finished. So that's the finished baubles so I'm going to go and put these on my tree now so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do make one I would absolutely love to see it because Christmas decorations are my favourite thing ever and I just want to see all the different colours. You can always share pictures with me on Instagram at Beading by Hannah um, and comment down below anything else you'd like to see. I've got a beaded Santa tutorial hopefully coming up next in time for Christmas. It should be coming up very soon. So stay tuned for that one and subscribe so you don't miss it. And uh, like this video if you enjoyed and yeah, follow me on Instagram at Beading by Hannah. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.